Let's move on um, to events uh, between members of the SNP because Joanna Cherry, the high profile SNP MP, was sacked from the party's front bench team in Westminster last night. This is what she said in response on Twitter. We're showing you now, despite hard work, results and a strong reputation, I've been sacked today from the SNP front bench. This was yesterday. My constituents and fellow party members who gave me a resounding mandate in recent NEC elections should rest assured that I will continue to work hard for them. Um, and the party's leader in Westminster, Ian Blackford, reshuffled his team and that was what happened with Joanna Cherry. Let's talk to our political correspondent, Nick Erdley. Nick, what's going on? Hi, Joe. Um, there have been splits in the SNP for some time, mostly in the background, but I think they're increasingly boiling over. They're on things like independence strategy, on self-identification for trans people, on the Alex Salmon case and how he was treated by the Scottish government. Um, I mean, Joanna Cherry is someone who's taken different positions from the leadership, sometimes quite publicly. And I think the view of Ian Blackford and his allies was that this had got too much and that, frankly, she was not contributing to the group as they saw it. Joanna Cherry's allies will tell you that she was a key performer. You know, you remember the Article 50 case? She was a big player in that. Um, she's a pretty prominent MP. And there are no shortage of people in the SNP telling me today that actually they think at some point she was outshining the leadership at Westminster and that was something to do with it. Um, but I think it's just a sign of how significant the divisions are in the SNP group at Westminster now that one of their key names, someone that the public know, has been sacked so under ceremoniously. Right, and Joanna Cherry, Nick, also said yesterday that she'd received a vicious threat to her personal safety, which she's referred to the police, uh, and in response to that, Kirsty Blackman, the SNP MP and frontbencher, tweeted this, horrified to hear that one of my colleagues received a threat last night. This is totally unacceptable, and I condemn anyone who does this. I wish the police every success in bringing this individual to justice. I am also pleased to hear that Joanna was able to get some where safe. Now, Joanna Cherry has responded to Kirsty Blackman with, thank you for your concern, but this is what can happen when you rile up your base with lies and smears. Actions have consequences, so please think hard again before you attack a colleague on social media, hashtag deeds, not words. That is a pretty bitter exchange. What's going on here? Yeah, I mean, this comes back to the trans debate and the two are on different wings of the party when it comes to how uh, how uh, self-recognition should work. Um, there's no love lost between the pair either. I think at one stage they actually blocked each other or one blocked the other on Twitter. My understanding is some of the group meetings on Zoom over the last few weeks between SNP MPs have been, you know, pretty fraught. There have been some pretty significant arguments. Um, but this is going to get worse rather than better over the next few weeks because, yes, you have some of these spats on Twitter, but next week Alex Hammond is due to give evidence to the Hollywood Inquiry looking at how the Scottish government uh, handled harassment allegations against him. There are some people in the SNP, um, I think Kenny McCaskill is among them, who are extremely unhappy in the way that the SNP hierarchy has dealt with this. And I think, you know, the next few weeks, although Nicola Sturgeon is riding high in the polls, although it looks like the party is going to do extremely well at the Holyrood election in May, although independence appears to now be in the lead in the polls um, versus the union, there are some pretty dangerous weeks ahead for the SNP. All right. And uh, Nick, just to say that Kirsty Blackman has tweeted again to say, I do not have not and will never sanction or encourage violence or threats of violence. Politics and any other job should be a place where people feel safe. Unfortunately, we have a long, long way to go until we get to that point. Um, Nick Hurdley, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Now, I mean, Kenny, these events have been unfolding over the last 24 hours. What do you make of them? Well, all parties are coalitions, the broad churches, they have uh, their ups and downs. We've seen it in the Conservatives. We see talent like Jeremy Hunt sitting on the back benches because at the end of the day, it's the party leadership that choose. I've been in the SNP 40 years. Over those years, I've actually been expelled and then reinstated, as indeed was Alex Salmond. So all parties go through this. It would be fair to say there's a bit of turbulence. There's no point in denying that. It's all over the papers and media in Scotland at the moment. But it's the party, more than a bit of turbulence. 
Well, it's, you know, the party and the independence movement will come through this. And you've also got to remember that the SNP is but one part. So when people certainly sit at the border, focus on the SNP and believe that this destabilizes the campaign for independence, they forget that the uh, SNP is but one of the political parties that support independence mm. and that there's a far wider movement that right. is of significant strength, which is why out of 20, if not 21, opinion polls have all showed independence in the lead. Right, but the hang party on. Will best is the party will get through it. Right, but you aren't happy, are you, with what's happened to Joanna Cherry in terms of her being sacked? Why not? Well, I think it's a big mistake. I mean, I've known Joanna now for many years, both as a lawyer and indeed as a politician. Uh, she's been outstanding in both. Uh, why, when you want to have your best talent in the uh, shadow cabinet, you would not have Joanna leading, especially in an area where she has performed remarkably well, both politically in the chamber and indeed in terms of the justice issue itself. Uh, that amuses me, but that is the right and entitlement of the leadership, which is, as I say, is a decision made by Keir Starmer it's a decision sure. made by Boris George. All right, but you say it's a, a massive mistake by the leadership to sack Joanna Cherry, but she has said that Westminster is increasingly irrelevant to Scotland's constitutional future and the SNP needs to radically rethink its strategy. Do you agree with that criticism of the leadership? Uh, yes, I think I've been arguing for a change in strategy for some considerable time. I'm delighted to have been elected to Westminster, but at the end of the day, Scotland and England are diverging. They're Part of the countries, and not just political parties, are going in different directions. So what do you want them to do? Was... What is Nicola Sturgeon not doing? At the end of the day, I think we have to ensure that the decision on Scotland's future is decided by Scotland, that there can be no veto given to Boris Johnson or indeed Westminster. If the people of Scotland wish to hold a referendum or to have an election that decides their constitutional future, that is the democratic right of the Scottish people. We cannot have the absurdity where Boris Johnson says there cannot be a rerun of a Scottish referendum, not now, not for decades, or if not generations, but he's prepared to countenance a referendum on the border in, the nor in Northern Ireland every seven years. That is undemocratic, it is unfair, the people of Scotland want change, Brexit is an unmitigated disaster, yeah. and now is the time for the people of Scotland to have their own opportunity to once again become a European nation. So the leadership is being too timid? Well, I think the leadership is uh, failing to address taking powers back from Boris Johnson, so long as, without boring uh, your listeners about a Section 30 order, yes. which is a method by which the 2014 referendum was resolved amicably between Scotland, the Scottish Government and the UK Government, and it was agreed that a referendum could progress. Uh, but if a Section 30 order is not to be given, and indeed if a Section 30 order hasn't been sought, uh, then issues arise. I happen to think that the Scottish people are in fact sovereign in this, All right. and they should have the right to decide their okay. own destiny, whether that's a referendum or utilising an election. Right. Do you think Alex Salmond has been badly treated throughout this whole process and the investigation into allegations against him? Uh, yes, uh, that's why I supported him and was delighted to see him both vindicated in the civil case and acquitted on all charges in the criminal case. I've known him for many years and consider him a friend. There's an investigation ongoing in mm. the Scottish Parliament that I think is quite correct. I do think further information is required to be made clear, but at the end of the day, Alex Salmond has been exculpated and what went wrong, uh, who may have done what, requires to be brought out into the open. Right. Would you ever consider joining forces with Alex Salmond and perhaps starting a new party? Uh, no, as far as I know, Alex Salmond has made no such uh, suggestion. Alex stepped back from the SNP when he had his civil case to fight. He's carried this matter on uh, to clear his name and uh, be uh, exonerated, as he has been, uh, and has been successful. He's not stepped forward back into politics. My position has been to call on those of the SNP who have been upset and considered leaving uh, over events over the weekend to remain in and fight. Uh, this is, as I say, the party that I've been in for four years have indeed been expelled from and come back in. Right. Uh, but at the end of the day, we also have to remember that the independence movement is a broad church. It is not simply the SNP, and I've certainly called within my own party 
for greater hands of friendship to be put out to the wider movement, yes. not just to those who are part. But you are encouraging people to stay within the SNP and fight from within for what you think should be the process towards independence. If you lose that battle, though, um, and you are ignored and sidelined, as many people would see it, because you and Joanna Cherry are probably the only SNP MPs who don't have a front bench role now, what, what will your alternative be? Well, I don't believe we'll lose. The party had a national council and national elections just there at the end of November. Uh, Joanna was returned, you know, by the barrel load, clearly, as the most uh, popular politician within yeah. the SNP. Yes, uh, other significant changes, others, well, that's a decision made by the current leadership within yeah. the parliamentary group. But the party rank and file uh, endorsed wow. Joanna by well over 50%, and clearly is the most popular politician within the SNP. SNP and indeed other significant changes took place that resulted, as I say, in a sea change, mm. not quite a sea change, but a significant change taking place within the power that be right. in the National Executive Committee. Okay. So change is underway in the SNP. Right. The sound is a little bit glitchy, but we're going to continue uh, and pursue it and hope it actually goes. Um, I, I just mentioned that um, almost every SNP MP has some sort of front bench role uh, by you and Joanna Cherry. Do you think that is because you are too close to Alex Salmond? Well, I couldn't possibly answer that. That would be a matter for others, I have to say. I've got plenty to keep them my, keep on my plate, whether with the Justice Committee, working with those organisations that I've built up a relationship both in Scotland and indeed across the UK. I was fortunate to have been Justice Secretary in Scotland for seven and a half years, and it's given me a, an awful lot of contact. So there's work to be done, and I get on and do it. And it's for those in uh, charge of the party group in Westminster to decide how they allocate. I just happen to think that with regard to Joanna, uh, they've made a mistake. Do you think she's a future leader, Joanna Cherry? Well, I've no doubt she's a potential future leader, absolutely. Uh, there isn't a vacancy at the present moment, but there's Joanna and there's uh, several others uh, who are equally talented and uh, exactly the same as I've served under Alex Salmond, I've served under Gordon Wilson, uh, and uh, uh, you know, there will be a future leader at some stage within the SNP. All right, it's time to move on because we're going to talk about, Robert, uh, your book, This Sovereign Isle. We're showing everybody the front page.